the fifth way, which Independence Day 2, we have Warcraft, with Assassin's Creed, we have 50 Shades of Black, Ghostbusters, female style, we have Zula the Toe, North of the North, Gods of Egypt. Egypt. As you can see, I just did my top 10 worst on Tio's channel. If you did not see that, link in the description below. But now that I've done my top 10 worst, here is my top 5 best movies of 2016, in my opinion. Starring at number 5, Batman vs. Superman Extended Edition. I did not like the theoretical edition, I did not. But the extended edition was phenomenal, Lex Luthor was a lot better, and explained why Superman is going after Batman, I loved the character development. For the whole time my mom actually thought that he was the Joker, so it's explainable. They explained why they were going after Gotham City, I loved the whole premise of Wonder Woman being there, she had a lot more character in the extended edition. Okay, coming at number 4, we have Captain America Civil War. <coughs> which mainly everyone enjoyed. It's not on my top list, because I, I agree they... It was a bit slow at the beginning, but I loved it throughout the movie. I loved it how they included the Avengers in this one, because they never do that in any of the other spin-off films. But Captain America Civil War was a great way to end the Captain America trilogy. It had Bucky uh, recognizing his mistakes about killing Tony's parents. Tony not realizing that he killed his parents was a surprise to me. And even bigger surprise how Captain America knew that Winter Soldier knew about him and his parents. And I mean, and also Black Panther was amazing. I loved his character. It didn't feel like a shoehorn. Wonder Woman felt like a shoehorn a little bit. But <coughs> Black Panther was awesome. I loved his character and I loved how they got into his past. It wasn't just like Ant-Man, Ant-Man was a shoehorn and so was Hawkeye, but Black Panther I loved, I loved all the characters in Civil War, great movie. Coming at number 3 is Doctor Strange. <coughs> Coming right into the Marvel Cinematic Universe, Doctor Strange I thought was a little bit better than Civil War because it was about a single character and he, I have, if you want to see my movie review on Doctor Strange I'll link it below. But I still think that Benedict Cumberbatch can be anything in any movie, and he is good <coughs> because he can change his voice. Like I didn't even recognize the American accent; I still pictured him as British through the entire thing. I loved the villain. I loved him throughout. He seemed like a real challenge, like more than Loki. I love Bill. Like he, could, I, I want to see him return. Honestly. He wasn't just a businessman who wanted revenge. I loved the Doctor Strange villain. He could actually conquer time and space. That is Loki stuff right there. Keep the Loki stuff. Forget the businessmen villain in Marvel. They come and go in every film. Just keep the gods and mystical beings in Marvel. Bring back the Ancient One or whatever. Overall, Doctor Strange, Doctor Strange, Best movie in the Marvel Cinematic Universe so far, I think. Coming at number two on my list is Deadpool. Deadpool, I loved. They did not hold back. And for the love of God and all that is holy, do not take your children to see Deadpool. It is like Sausage Party, okay? Except with actual actors. Okay, <clears throat> just don't take your child to see Deadpool. Wait until he's like 14 or 16 years of age because they do not hold back curse words out of everything and blood and gore out of everything. Now, if your child plays Call of Duty, this is more than Call of Duty, it's Deadpool. If you read the comics, you would love it. If you don't read the comics, you would love it. If you are a new fan to Marvel and you just and this was your first Marvel movie, you would love it. It doesn't really tie into the Avengers or X. Well, it ties into X-Men because there's Colossus. I love Colossus and I love Teenage Warhead. I love those two. And I also love Francis. He's not a, like a real big tough guy villain. Well, he is. He can't be killed. But, you know, I love him for a first time Deadpool movie villain, an actual Deadpool movie villain. You know, I, I love the guy. And. I loved how they tortured him, it, like, it got me queasy a little bit how they were torturing him to make him, you know, Deadpool. Like that, don't show your kids this because the first half of this movie is really gruesome. It, it all is, but you know what I mean. And my number one movie of 2016, I just saw it last month. Now, 
I did not see Fantastic Beasts yet, and I'm a huge Carter fan. I didn't see it yet, so I'm not going to put that on my list. Number one movie of 2016 is definitely Star Wars Rogue One. Now, I feel like I enjoyed this more than Force Awakens. And it's a prequel, which I, I do enjoy episodes 1, 3, 2, not so much, but I do like them. Uh, but this was in between 3 and 4, and oh my god, it is a war movie. Two hours of killing, and it's not as dark as you think. There is some humor, which I love. I don't love just an action movie. I love humor in an action movie. So it doesn't bring me to death with just action and violence without a premise. Star Wars always has me. I enjoyed this more than Force Awakens because Force Awakens, yes, I feel like it's a rehash of A New Hope, but it's much more than that. I love Force Awakens, and I didn't think that at all when I first saw it. I thought it's a completely new storyline, and I love Kylo Ren, even though he's not, he can never be as powerful as a Sith because he's not a Sith. He, I, I just love the cross card blade and how he used it against Finn. Yes, he could have choked Finn, but I love the movie. I love Chewie's reaction to him killing Han. I loved it. But Rogue One, Rogue One had so much lore and nerd stuff in it. Like, if you're a Star Wars fan and you watch Clone Wars and Rebels, there are Easter eggs out of everything from Clone Wars and Rebels. You see, you see the ghost from Rebels in like a split second in the movie. Now, if you're a huge Vader fan and you're expecting Vader in the movie, You'll be disappointed, but when he's there, you'll be orgasmed enough to enjoy it, and you'll want more. Because when he's only on for like three scenes at most, and his base is on Mustafar. I love that. I love how his base is on Mustafar, because it covers the prequels. They didn't shut them out. Because the Clone Wars on Netflix is amazing. I love that show. And the prequels... And it has so much lore in it. They actually tell you what a kyber crystal is. And I forgot they were making that for the Death Star. They mentioned that the Death Star was made from a kyber crystal. It's used to power a Jedi's lightsaber. And I love uh, Donnie Yen's character. He's a blind Jedi. I thought he was playing Kanan from Rebels at first. But no, uh, you don't see any of the Clone Wars or Ghost crew, Rebels crew in this. But I love Donnie Yen's character. I believe he was a Jedi, it was obvious. And spoilers, spoiler, if you want to skip this, leave. Okay, spoilers, they all die. Which I kind of expected, because they're not in the original trilogy, but they did it in such a way, and I love every character. Asal Gorera was amazing. He's not in it a bunch, but the best part for me was Krennic. Anything with Krennic, Tarkin, and Vader. Anything with those three characters. Oh, they, Tarkin was amazing. His character was amazing. He looked like the guy from 1977. Okay, well, I hope you have all enjoyed my top five list of movies of 2016. To see my top ten worst list, click the link below to T.O.'s channel. It's on there. And 2017... Rest in peace 2016, subscribe for more, and I'll see you next time. Please subscribe! It's free and easy, just click the red button. And remember, every time you subscribe to Xanderbro, you get a lifetime supply of update videos, hooray! You're still here? Why didn't you click it yet? Fine, I guess you don't want to see what's on their Patreon. Ah!